Alligators were once the undisputed top of the food chain in the Florida Everglades, but today that position is challenged by another reptile, the Burmese python. Topping out at 23 feet long and with a voracious appetite, this massive snake can prey on large animals, even the alligator itself. Some of you may be surprised that a snake this big lives in South Florida, but the Burmese python is not supposed to be in North America at all. They are one of over 500 types of animals and plants in Florida that are not native. How did they get here, and what kinds of effects can they have? The story of each one is different, but all have a few things in common. All over the world, people have brought animals and plants to places where they are not native. Some have little to no impact, and some have actually been good for their new habitat. The Aldabra giant tortoise, a native of the Aldabra Islands, has been brought to the island of Mauritius to replace native tortoises that went extinct long ago. The Aldabra tortoises have helped restore ecosystems in Mauritius by eating the fruit of the native ebony trees and therefore spreading seeds to help it grow across the island. A living thing is considered invasive when it has a bad effect on an environment where it's not native. When an animal or plant is in its natural habitat, many factors control their numbers, like predators, diseases, weather, and parasites. In a foreign environment, they have no guaranteed population controllers. Without them, these species adapt very aggressively and their numbers grow much higher than natural. Some scientists think there are about 4,300 invasive species across the United States. Florida is very vulnerable to invasive species because many people import them through the airports and seaports. Once they reach this state, they can thrive in the subtropical climate and make themselves very much at home, as you're about to see. Some of Florida's exotics came here naturally. Armadillos and coyotes migrated over from the western states. However, the majority of the state's exotics were brought in by human beings, accidentally or on purpose. Those of you who have been to Florida see many animals that you probably didn't even know were invasive. Pigeons are originally from the Mediterranean region, and all of those living in Florida are descended from pets that either escaped or were released by their owners. The red-eared slider is native to the Mississippi River and is now found in Florida for the same reason. Others arrived here accidentally. Fire ants, which are originally from South America, and brown anoles, which are from Cuba, were stowaways on ships docking in the U.S. Florida's invaders have affected locals in many ways. Lionfish eat native fish and compete with others like groupers for the same food. The house sparrow forces native birds out of their nests. The island apple snail eats native aquatic plants so rapidly that it can cause algae blooms. Feral pigs damage landscapes as they root around with their snouts. The suckermouth catfish has a spiny dorsal fin that can choke native birds who have tried to eat them. Even your own pet cats can spread diseases like feline leukemia to the native bobcat. Invasive plants cause just as many problems. People brought them to Florida for decorative purposes, and unfortunately, they grew out of control. The old world climbing fern can completely blanket native trees and fatally trap animals like deer and turtles. Brazilian pepper grows so aggressively it can replace native plants. Water cabbage can block sunlight and oxygen that animals and plants underwater need. 
and water hyacinth reduces water quality and crowds native aquatic plants. When an invasive species becomes established, it's almost impossible to get rid of it. The most important thing we can do is prevent them from reaching our backyards. Remember not to release any unwanted pets into the wild, and to use native plants to decorate your yards and gardens. Throughout this series, we'll get to know more about the many invasive species in this state. Join me next time to learn more about the Burmese python. Be sure to subscribe for more Wildlife Chronicles. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on our next adventure.